about open metadata here in the in the meetup and we have some updates coming to our data quality features in open metadata that Teddy is going to be demonstrating for us today. So please, Teddy, uh, take it from here. All right, awesome. Thanks, Nick, for the for the introduction. Thanks, uh, Rizal, for the for the amazing demo. Super, super interesting. Um, so as Nick mentioned, we have been working quite a lot for this this specific release on you know continuing the development of observability inside um, inside uh, open metadata, and we wanted to present you two exciting new features that are coming in 1.11. But first, I wanted to do uh, a bit of history for people that are new to open metadata uh, about the observability inside uh, open metadata. So the observability inside open metadata is at the core since the inception of the project, right? So five years ago, when the project started, data quality and observability was already a core part of the tool, right? We started the, the project with a vision that you have access to, you know, siloed tools, cataloging, you can think about Data Hub, like very pure player when it comes to data catalog, you have great expectation per player in data quality. And we've seen through experience, those silos or the, those silos are creating some uh, problematic and some issues and challenges inside organization. So when we created open metadata, our intention was to break those silos and have that observability integrated within the metadata platform tool, right? And since the inception of the project, we've developed over uh, 30 native uh, test, test cases, 30 native descriptive net, uh, metrics, uh, native partitioning and sampling management uh, directly inside the, the platform, the ability to run a custom SQL tests for your specialized use case. And unlike other tools, you have the ability to run these observability um, workflows over 50 plus connectors today, right? So all the database connectors that are available inside open, meta open metadata today, you can go ahead and uh, run data quality test and descriptive statistic over those connectors, right? And then on top of that, we also have support for NoSQL, uh, NoSQL connectors, but also your data lake connectors, right? So it's really at the core of the vision of open metadata, right? And then on top of that, you also have integrated incident management and alert and notification integration with many destinations, right? And that's just in open metadata, in the open source version of the tool. So available for you. Um, for free, basically, you know. And then when you talk about Collate, the SaaS version of uh, 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 of open metadata, then on top of that, you have access to anomaly detection, where you have AI powered data quality, impact analysis, where you have the ability to visualize quickly where the failure is originating from. And then on top of that, you can also view everything around raw sampling so that you can understand the failure patterns of uh, your data quality test. Observability dashboard so that you have a 360 view, kind of an executive level view of the platform health. Spark integration to run observability for very large data set. And then automation through deterministic and agentic workflows so that you can deploy data quality at scale with minimum effort and have a faster time to resolution with deep root cost analysis. So that's what we've been working on for the past five years, right? And for this release, we wanted to bring open metadata a step further in the observability, um, in the observability world. And that's what those two features uh, we believe are accomplishing in, in 1.11, right? So what we have heard a lot from our users is having the ability to define data quality tests directly inside the platform is amazing. But then we also want to have the ability to centralize and govern our data quality test within our code and then have that those results published back automatically inside, um, 
inside uh, inside open metadata, right? And doing that previously was possible through the API and whatnot, but required a little bit a little bit of uh, you know technical knowledge of how the platform works. And then on top of that, a lot of our users have been telling us that it's amazing that you can you know run data quality test once the data are loaded inside my table. But what I really want to is to be able to have a circuit breaker so that I'm sure I'm not loading any bad data inside my um, my model tables, right? And so that's what we're introducing with uh, data quality as code, right? We're bringing open metadata closer to your transformation code, uh, centralizing and versioning and version controlling your test definition while keeping the centralization part by interconnecting your transformation with open metadata test case results so that we're still on that vision of breaking silos that may exist inside um, inside data platform. All right, so what does this look like, right? So let me go to, to my open metadata that is running locally. Um, so I have a Snowflake service that has multiple databases. The customer's one is the one that is interesting for us. And I'm particularly going to look at the, at the college app. And in the college app schema, we have two tables that are of interest. So we have our customer lifetime value table, and we have our product performance table. So those two tables are generated and fed through a different transformation, right? So let me move to my transformation code, right? And in my transformation code, I have, I have two files, right? And those two files represent two ways that you can use and leverage data quality as code um, uh, with Colette, right? So if I look at uh, the first one, so the test runner, I have imported a few elements from the open metadata SDK library. And if I'm looking at the logic of my code, I have one step that transform and load my data, right? So that is that query here that is doing some aggregation, and then it's loading uh, this data into customer lifetime value um, table. And then I have a step that will then validate the, uh, transform, the, transform, the transform data that were loaded inside that table, right? And that's what's interesting for us, right? And you can see that in four lines of code, right, where I have a configure uh, a configure call, then I'm adding a um, I'm linking a test runner to my table that lives inside um, inside open metadata. So in our case, it's going to be our customer lifetime value table. And then I'm adding a few tests. So here I have free test, row count, uh, value to be not null, and value to be unique. And then at the end, I'm simply executing a run that will that is going to run my test cases, right? So just to make sure I'm not cheating, let's go check our customer lifetime value and our data quality um, tab. And then here we can see we have no data quality tests that have been um, ingested. So next step, we'll simply run it. So let's go ahead and start the execution. So it's going to go through the step, load the data, and do the validation um, as the final step. Right. So it's connecting to my Snowflake, running the um, uh, transformation, and then it's executing our test case. Right. Perfect. So we can see our workflow uh, was executed uh, perfectly. And we can see that we have two success and one failures. Right. And so you can leverage that information directly inside your transformation code to then perform uh, whatever step you want, right? But now if we move back to uh, open metadata and we refresh the page, then we can see that the same information that was generated and used inside our transformation code is now automatically available inside our, uh, our table, right? So we're breaking silos. You can run and govern your data quality test in your code and you can automatically push it back into a centralized per platform for your data consumer to be informed about any important information around quality, right? So that's the first way of doing it. And then the second way is our runtime validation. So similarly here, we are, we're importing 
a few libraries from uh, our open metadata SDK library. And then we are performing some transformation. But here, unlike the previous uh, step, what we are doing, we are um, loading some raw data from our table. And then we are transforming the data. And then we're validating and loading it, right? And if I'm looking at my validate and load method, we'll have uh, similarly a few line of codes that are very similar to the test runner that we saw previously. But here, the difference in my validator uh, run method is that I can pass a on success and on failure callback that we then take the step to perform certain action, right? So here in my case, if there is any data quality test that is failing, I want it to stop the transformation and simply roll back and never load the data inside my table, right? So we can go ahead and validate that, you know, we have no data inside our product performance uh, table. That's where we will be normally loading the data if uh, everything is running uh, as expected with no, with no error. And so let's go ahead and run this uh, part of our transformation. And here, if there is any error, we're expecting, you know, circuit breaker and no data should be loaded inside our table, right? All right, perfect. So we can see that, you know, our run has finished and there were indeed an error, right? So let's go ahead and check if any data was loaded inside my product performance table. And here I can see no data was loaded, right? And then on top of that, I have the ability to then decide to publish those test case results to a specific um, um, entity inside, inside open metadata, still breaking the silo, right? So that you can perform the transformation inside your, inside your code and then push it back inside open metadata, right? So that's our line with the publish right here. And if I'm going back to uh, to my um, uh, performance table. So let me log back in. Yeah, perfect. So if I'm going back to my performance table and to the data quality tab, now I can see that I have the same results that are loaded and centralized inside, um, inside Open Metadata. So that's the first feature that we have developed and that we're super excited about. Now, the second one is the ability for you to quickly break down and implement dimensionality tests, right? So you can think about subtest among a bigger test. So how does it translate inside Colet? So let me uh, move to the demo tab, uh, slide so that we can all know that we are performing a demo. Um, perfect. So let me go to my uh, products table. And I'm going to go to the data observability tab. And I'm going to add a test case. Now we can see we have a third layer that is uh, coming, which is our dimensional level test. So I will pick a, um, let's do uh, my unit price uh, column. And then I want it to be broken down by uh, two dimensions. So the product name and the category. And then I want to check that uh, I do not have any, uh, any negative values, right? So let's do column value to be between, and then we'll check zero. Let's compute the row number, uh, the row count, and let's create our data quality test. Perfect, so let, let us now run it. So let me run it. It should take a few seconds. Let me refresh. Perfect. So now we have our test that was uh, that runs successfully. And I can see that my test failed. Now, if I click on my test, I will have the similar view that you are used to with the data range, uh, min, mask, min max in our case, with the value to be between. But now you also see the dimension, dimensionality tab appear on the table. And what does gives you, it gives you more information about which dimension is at the origin of the failure. And on top of that, we will be giving you some impact score. And the impact score is basically uh, telling you based on the number of rows that fail within a category, how much that this dimension contribute to, uh, to that failure. Here we have 
a fairly uniform uh, distribution in our data. So they are contributing similarly. And then we can navigate to the product name and have the same view, but from the product name perspective, right? And so you can see that you can quickly identify what is the origin of the failure, which dimension is causing the failure, so that then with that information, you can go in your system and resolve that uh, issue uh, in, a, in a more efficient and, and faster way. Perfect. And that's just in open metadata. In Collate, we are also bringing in 1.11, a data quality planner agent to allow you to basically deploy observability at scale, at scale. root cause analysis agent so that you can quickly understand uh, where is the uh, root cause of the origin by simply asking the agent and letting the agent just figure out through the log and the failure uh, what is happening. And we are also implementing alert and notification templating, right? So you can think about MailChimp, but built-in collate, right? So that you can then adopt and customize the alert and notification based on your organizations. All right, and to wrap up, you can see in open metadata, we are making a lot of progress and making sure you know the community has access to the tools that allow them to keep a, a healthy data platform. And in collate, we are making sure that you know, we're automating as much as possible and reducing the time that it takes you to either deploy or resolve your data quality, uh, data quality test.